Human trafficking is an umbrella term that is, problematically, often reduced to mean prostitution, when it involves sex trafficking. Article 3, paragraph o of the Protocol to Prevent, Suppress and Punish Trafficking in Persons defines trafficking in persons as the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of persons, by means of the threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power or of a position of vulnerability or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person, for the purpose of exploitation. Exploitation shall include, at a minimum, the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude or the removal of organs. Human trafficking in India, although illegal under Indian law, remains a significant problem. People are frequently illegally trafficked through India for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation and forced, bonded labor. Although no reliable study of forced and bonded labor has been completed, NGOs estimate this problem affects 20 to 65 million Indians. Men, women and children are trafficked in India for diverse reasons. Women and girls are trafficked within the country for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation and forced marriage, especially in those areas where the sex ratio is highly skewed in favor of men. Men and boys are trafficked for the purposes of labor, and may be sexually exploited by traffickers to serve as gigolos, massage experts, escorts, etc. A significant portion of children are subjected to forced labor as factory workers, domestic servants, beggars, and agriculture workers, and have been used as armed combatants by some terrorist and insurgent groups. India is also a destination for women and girls from Nepal and Bangladesh trafficked for the purpose of commercial sexual exploitation. Nepali children are also trafficked to India for forced labour in circus shows. Indian women are trafficked to the Middle East for commercial sexual exploitation. Indian migrants who migrate willingly every year to the Middle East and Europe for work as domestic servants and low-skilled labourers may also end up part of the human trafficking industry. In such cases, workers may have been recruited by way of fraudulent recruitment practices that lead them directly into situations of forced labor, including debt bondage. In other cases, high debts incurred to pay recruitment fees leave them vulnerable to exploitation by unscrupulous employers in the destination countries, where some are subjected to conditions of involuntary servitude, including non payment of wages, restrictions on movement, unlawful withholding of passports, and physical or sexual abuse. Human trafficking in India results in women suffering from both mental and physical issues. Mental issues include disorders such as PTSD, depression and anxiety. The lack of control women have in trafficking increases their risk of suffering from mental disorders. Women who are forced into trafficking are at a higher risk for HIV, TB, and other STDs. Condoms are rarely used and therefore there is a higher risk for victims to suffer from an STD. U.S. State Department's Office to Monitor and Combat Trafficking in Persons placed the country in Tier 2 in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Profile and demographics of traffickers Traffickers of young girls into prostitution in India are often women who have been trafficked themselves. As adults they use personal relationships and trust in their villages of origin to recruit additional girls. Prosecution The Government of India penalizes trafficking for commercial sexual exploitation through the Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act with prescribed penalty of seven years to life imprisonment. India also prohibits bonded and forced labour through the Bonded Labour Abolition Act, the Child Labour Act, and the Juvenile Justice Act. Indian authorities also use sections 366 and 372 of the Indian Penal Code, prohibiting kidnapping and selling minors into prostitution respectively, to arrest traffickers. Penalties under these provisions are a maximum of 10 years imprisonment and a fine. Bonded labor and the movement of sex trafficking victims may occasionally be facilitated by corrupt officials. They protect brothels that exploit victims and protect traffickers and brothel keepers from arrest and other threats of enforcement. Usually, there are no efforts made to tackle the problem of government officials' complicity in trafficking workers for overseas employment. 
The bulk of bonded labor heads for Middle East to emerging economies and there are several media reports which report on the illegal and inhumane trafficking of Indian workers. India's Central Bureau of Investigation Incorporated Anti-Trafficking Training, by Dr. Gilly McKenzie of the Interpol Trafficking and Organized Crime Division, into its standard curriculum. In November, the state of Maharashtra developed an action plan to combat trafficking. It did not, however, allocate appropriate funding to accomplish the objectives of this plan. The government does not break down these statistics by sections of the law, meaning that law enforcement data regarding trafficking offences may be conflated with data regarding arrests of women in prostitution pursuant to Section 8 of the ITPA. Protection India's efforts to protect victims of trafficking vary from state to state, but remain inadequate in many places. Victims of bonded labour are entitled to 10,000 rupees US $185 from the central government for rehabilitation, but this program is unevenly executed across the country. Government authorities do not proactively identify and rescue bonded labourers, so few victims receive this assistance. Although children trafficked for forced labor may be housed in government shelters and are entitled to 20,000 rupees $370, the quality of many of these homes remains poor and the disbursement of rehabilitation funds is sporadic. Some states provide services to victims of bonded labor, but non-governmental organizations provide the majority of protection services to these victims. The central government does not provide protection services to Indian victims trafficked abroad for forced labor or commercial sexual exploitation. Indian diplomatic missions in destination countries may offer temporary shelter to nationals who have been trafficked, once repatriated. However, neither the central government nor most state governments offer any medical, psychological, legal, or reintegration assistance for these victims. Section 8 of the ITPA permits the arrest of women in prostitution. Although statistics on arrests under Section 8 are not kept, the government and some NGOs report that, through sensitization and training, police officers no longer use this provision of the law. It is unclear whether arrests of women in prostitution under Section 8 have actually decreased. Because most law enforcement authorities lack formal procedures to identify trafficking victims among women arrested for prostitution, some victims may be arrested and punished for acts committed as a result of being trafficked. Some foreign victims trafficked to India are not subject to removal. Those who are subject to removal are not offered legal alternatives to removal to countries in which they may face hardship or retribution. NGOs report that some Bengali victims of commercial sexual exploitation are pushed back across the border without protection services. The government also does not repatriate Nepali victims. NGOs primarily perform this function. Many victims decline to testify against their traffickers due to the length of proceedings and fear of retribution by traffickers. The Ministry of Labor and Employment displays full page advertisements against child labor in national newspapers at periodic intervals. The government has also instituted pre-departure information sessions for domestic workers migrating abroad on the risks of exploitation. These measures include distinguishing between emigration check required ECR and emigration check not required ECNR passports. ECR passport holders must prove to government authorities that they shall not be exploited when traveling abroad if they wish to travel. Many Indian workers pay large sums of money to agents who facilitate their emigration outside the official channels and willingly emigrate despite the risks, drawn by the hope of higher salaries abroad. Therefore, a dream of better future often lures the people abroad and hence trafficking cannot entirely be prevented. India ratified the 2000 UN TIP Protocol 2011. The Government of India launched an anti human trafficking web portal in February 2014 that they hope will be an effective way for interested parties to share information about this topic. See also Debt bondage in India, Rape in India, Human rights in India Child trafficking in India Human trafficking in Nepal <laughs>